I'm going to do some more hybridization so you guys get used to other molecules as well. Now this time I'm going to go after molecules that have lone pairs. The first one I'll look at is water. Now when you do Lewis dot structure of water, you have two lone pairs and two single covalent bonds, sigma bonds to hydrogens. Now first thing I want you to realize is you have around oxygen, you have one, two, three and four electron center charges that means you have hybridization of sp3 1s plus all the orbitals of p p has three orbitals so you have four sp3 now every time you have sp3 your electron geometry is tetrahedral but your molecular geometry depending on lone pairs can have different shape this is v shape now I want to dissect oxygen and see how we hybridize that. So oxygen in ground state is 2 comma 6. The first two electrons are too close to the nucleus, do not take part in re bonding, 1s2. Slightly higher you have your 2s2, two two one pair of electrons, then you have your 2p. And here you have the remainder four, so we go one, two, three, and four. Now when you hybridize, I'm going to go after 2s and 2p, the valence shell and valence electrons only. So the process of mixing takes place. Now then again, remember this is a model, and we give you four equivalent or same energy hybridized orbitals. So this is sp3, 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 sp3. Now the first two will have lone pairs in them. And the last two only have one electron. So the lone pairs are, are this. Let me just box this and say this is my hybridized. Then let me take a red arrow and say, look, this here is this lone pair. This lone pair is this sp3. Now the others will have orbitals ready for hydrogen. So let's say this is this and hydrogen will dump one electron into this newly formed mixed orbital. And the last one is this and hydrogen will dump its electron into this. Then the shape comes to life. So lone pairs can be part of hybridization. The next example I go after is your ammonia, NH3. You do the Lewis dot structure, sigma covalent, sigma covalent, sigma covalent to hydrogens. Then, then just say you have one, two, three, four attachments. So this should be sp3 as well. Now let's just look at nitrogen in its ground state. Nitrogen is 2 comma 5. The first two electrons are in 1s2. Do not participate in bonding. Then you have 2s, two electrons there. Then in your 2p, you have one electron into each. Now in order to justify this shape, we are going to make hybridization and mixing of atomic orbitals. And we'll get 2s being mixed with 2p's. So you will form three, uh, sorry, four equivalent hybridized orbitals of sp3. The first one has a lone pair, and the remainder have one electron only, and they are ready for hydrogen's electrons to come there. So the first one, the lone pair here, is actually this orbital. Then other hydrogens will put one electron into each of the newly formed mixed orbitals. So that's the hybridization of nitrogen. The last example I do is the compound you have seen before, sulfur tetrafluoride. Now if I only do bookkeeping of electrons involved for sulfur, I have six electrons because it has six valence electrons. I also have four additional electrons from fluorine, that's total of 10. If you divide by two, you will get five ECC then you should put the first one, second, third, fourth, and fifth, and that's your C cell coming to life. 
Now, why do I do this? IB doesn't require you to know more than SP3, but I just want you to be able to do simple bookkeeping and say, look, this is one, this is the second, third, fourth, and fifth. So I have S being mixed with P's. P only has three orbitals. So far I have one, two, three, four. I need one more, I borrow it from D. So this hybridization of sulfur is SP3D. You have five orbitals of SP3. Now let's just look at sulfur in its ground state. So ground state, now remember sulfur has 16 electrons, two comma eight comma six. The last six electrons are going to participate in bonding. Now let me just uh, write it in terms of orbitals and suborbitals. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, then you have 3s2, you have 3p4, you have 3d which is vacant. Now first thing is remember these are your inner electrons and these are your valence electrons. I'm going to only show valence electrons and then their hybridization. So 3s2, uh, two, two electrons there. Then you have 3p4, one, two, three, then put the last one opposite spin into the first. You also have 3d, but they are all vacant, five of them. Now let's just mix them up and see what happens. So hybridization takes place mixing and I will have one, two, three, four, and five. So each one of them is sp3d. So I borrowed one from the five of the d orbitals to take part in this uh, sort of hybridization. I have one lone pair, the first one is the my lone pair. Then from 3p, one of them gets promoted or excited to higher, but eventually they shape their, change their shape to have equal energy. So one, two, three, four. So this is my hybridized orbitals, five equivalent orbitals. Then I want you to realize the lone pair is this. Then other fluorines, they have a p electron that they are willing and they are going to put it into each orbitals. So puts one here, puts one here, one and one. And don't ask me to draw the shape, I cannot do that. Okay, so that's hybridization of molecules with lone pairs.